Hi, I'm Casey Taylor, and this is FCC TV, where we highlight amazing and wonderful Fitchburg Cultural Council funded programs and the organizations behind them. Today we have from St. Bernard's, uh, is it St. Bernard's Academy? High School. St. Bernard's School. High School, excellent. Yeah. We have both STB TV and St. Bernard's High Robot Team, affectionately known as Robot. Robots. Robots. And from Fitchburg High School later, we'll be having the Fitchburg High School Broadcast Studio. All right, so let's hop right in. Okay. Today with me I have Art O'Leary. Hello. And Ariane Penchal, is that right? Yes, that is. Excellent. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. 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 Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I deeply appreciate it. Um, so could you give me a little background on the First Tech Robots program, a.k.a. Robots? Or robots, yeah. Did I do that right? Yep. Yes, yep. Did. So this is like our third year. Yeah. We started... Well, I, I started there four years ago, and one of the kids who's at WPI now, John Mansour, he goes, Mr. Rowe, we got to have a robot team, because I'm an old engineer, and he goes, we should get a robot team. He, and uh, so we said, okay. So we we, uh, uh, we wrote to Fitchburg Cultural Commission, and you guys got us the funding for our first robot. Nice. Uh, and then we entered the competitions. We went to St. John, had scrimmages, and then uh, Natick and Andover, and then... Uh, so we, you know, we were all new. We were just learning things and getting it to work. And then the second year was Ariane was here. Yes. And we had the the same robot. Then we like uh, modified it. And then that one was supposed to pick up. The first one was supposed to pick up big Legos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second, well, last year's were these donuts and launch them. And then so then this year we have wiffle balls, rubber ducks, and little blocks. They change the design every year. That makes sense, yeah. I guess. Yeah, and so this is our third year. All right, and what is a typical day at a uh, robots club like? Yeah, we have people come in and then we give them tasks to do or like help out. Mostly it's just people driving the robot around like going all over the place, it's fun. Excellent. Yeah, yeah practice and work on new stuff because mm -hmm. today like on our little guy there, we we're trying to make it a practice one to pick up. He's going to drive him out? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Here it comes. Yes. Thank you. It is alive. <laughs> yeah. So we, we do a high tech uh, thing to pick up wiffle balls. That yes. was what we were working on today. Our just prototype. To oh my goodness. <laughs> now I know you explained a little bit um, about how this robot works to me beforehand, but just for the audience, let's uh, let's go over it one more time. Okay. Who is this? This is the robot. This is robot. our first robot with pieces that we added for last year and this year we modified it a little bit mm -hmm. but it's four-wheel drive four -wheel so drive. that was awesome we kept that and the crane we changed last year yeah. okay and then the stronger. little picker upper mm -hmm. this little servo goes up and down to grab stuff yeah to pick up the so go down here and try to grab this ducky Excellent. So in a standard uh, scrimmage, you would be picking up objects and placing them in like a basket? Yeah, yeah. like a tray or a basket. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Certain zones where you place yeah, them. Yeah, the first year it was like stacking them. Yeah. And then you have these obstacles you got to go around. It's kind of like a little uh, WrestleMania rink. Yes. About. Uh, yeah, I used to watch Battle Bots. Is it yeah. close to that? <laughs> Except it's, you got to be friendly because yeah. sometimes yes, this makes sense. you're bots. on the same team. They put in four schools. Sometimes you're on the same side with the other school, and then they swap, and then sometimes you're opposite. So you got to be nice to everybody. Mm -hmm. awesome. It's uh, gracious, prof gracious professionalism. Yeah, that's their like big motto. That's the motto, like sportsmanship type stuff. Excellent. Yes. That flows in very nicely to my next question. What can students hope to learn at a uh, first tech robotics team? Mm, they could learn to like, if they want to pursue this, and they can actually see how it's like building a robot and how fun it is or boring up to them but it's really up to them and uh, usually they'd learn how to um, see how the stuff works like the coding means yeah uh, and the, the good thing it's like real engineering because like things go wrong <laughs> at the last minute yes and like and you get like panic and you know you gotta get shipped by the end of the fourth quarter like mm -hmm. And, Excellent. Uh, so you got to get to work. Beautiful. Yeah. And what sort of um, community benefits have you seen as a result of this program? Mm -hmm. I guess it just made a whole new culture. Everybody's just like robots whenever yeah, it's robots. Yeah, they're all psyched because it's yeah. Like, then we have a lot a, of people. Yeah, a lot of the kids uh, come from like the football team and the different 
you know, everybody can come, mm -hmm. and uh, we do it one afternoon. As as we get close to the competition, we get panic mode, and we do like all afternoons. Yeah. But uh, like for now, it's one one afternoon a week. Oh, that's week brilliant. So, what sort of uh, challenges have you guys come across this year or in the past three years, and um, mm -hmm. how have you overcome these challenges? Biggest challenge has been this one little servo. Yeah, the little picker up. Right now, it's kind of weak, but it gets better. We just have to find, like, the control thing is not giving enough energy to that, so it's not that strong. We need to find a new way. Mm. Okay. And the big challenge was, like, everybody else had corona, oh, COVID. Yes. Yeah, so before, you'd go to the different high schools, and they have, you know, championship. It was like a big hoopla. Mm -hmm. yes. And last year, we got a rink, and uh, we, did, we did our own, and, and it's basically like half a setup, and you did it online. So they have a little timer with a buzzer and on the computer, and you run it through the program, and then you enter your score, and uh, they co collect all the different schools. So out of like, I think it was about 30 schools, 20 something, 30 schools that had the robot. Uh, six of them had them that worked, so we had one that worked, and we came in fourth. Wow. In the scrimmage. Congratulations. But the ones that won, so we got, say, like 40 or 60 points. We didn't take this home when everybody went home for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. The teams that had the 400 points, they took the robot home and spent the whole year like working on it in their garage. Yeah, yeah. So they I had like super duper. Mega robots. I believe. All right, and how can St. Bernard students take advantage of this program if they're not already? Uh, it's just show up and uh, do robots. Like, just yeah. show up. Yeah, just show, show up. up and, That's excellent. And like some kids like to drive it, some kids like to program it. Uh, some kids know already how to program it. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple of guys, Parker and uh, I think Andrew. You know, yeah. and you know some of it. There, some right? little the bit. Java. Because I'm a mechanical engineer, not a electrical. So. It's like, oh, you guys take care yeah, of it. Yeah, that sounds like coding, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's the Java, Java script, and they have this blocks program. Yeah. Yep. Oh, cool. Okay. Wild. All right. So let's uh, let's see this guy in action for a little bit. Okay. So right now, yeah. So it has. To, yeah, it goes from a phone, so the controller to the phone, and it goes like a walkie-talkie to the phone on that controller on there. Mm -hmm. You can control it like this. You can grab stuff. There's already a duck inside. But there is still a duck inside. <laughs> yeah, the duck ball. well, that's from the. Uh, nice. It's not duct tape, but it's a uh, gaffer tape. <laughs> <laughs> still a prototype. Yeah. But then we can. We would have like a little thing that we would have to put it in, and just drop it in. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we got more wiffle balls. Got more yeah. So balls. last week, this year's parts came, so we got like a ton of rubber duckies and and the wiffle balls. And then the new goals, you have to put them in the same, you keep the same rink, but the, uh, the goals and those parts change. Yeah, some things are really hard right now, but these things are weighted. That's pretty good, the duck's stuck on the duck tape. The duck is stuck. It is stuck in there. All right, yeah. well, thank you so much for coming today yeah, for this um, interview. Thanks for I very much appreciate it, Art, Ariane. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, up next we do have St. Bernard's TV, STB TV, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Audrey from the Fitchburg Cultural Council and we're looking for new members. If you can speak and write in multiple languages, have bookkeeping skills or graphic design skills, are interested in social media or promotion, are a high school or college student, a Fitchburg business owner, artist, scientist, humanist, or just want to be involved with arts and culture here and have a say on how we spend our state allocated money, please consider joining the council. The Fitchburg Cultural Council, or FCC, also organizes Fitchburg Open Studios, creative meet and greets, networking events, and have our own show called FCC. TV, which airs Wednesday at 8 p.m. on FATV. If you are interested in volunteering to become a voting council member, come attend one of our meetings, which are always open to the public, and see what we do. We meet every third Tuesday of the month at 4.30 p.m. at the Legislative Building next to City Hall. Come to our meetings, introduce yourself, check our City Hall webpage, and get more involved with all the amazing and cool events. <laughs> All right, 
right, welcome back. I'm Casey Taylor and this is FCC TV with the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Now I have uh, STB TV from St. Bernard's. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Very good. Thank, Thank you for having Excellent. us. Thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. And uh, if I have this right, it's Mike D, the faculty adver advisor. Yes. Not advertiser. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, Declan Fluharty? Yes, Declan All Fluharty. right. <laughs> Declan, okay. Uh, and Patrick Ginnity. Get perfect. All right. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> so right off the bat, uh, give us a little background on STB TV in St. Bernard's. How'd this program start? Sure. Um, well, this is my, uh, like Art before me, uh, we both started at the same time. So this is my fourth year at STB. Uh, and I became the STB TV advisor at that point. Uh, but it's been part of the STV community for over uh, a decade uh, before I got there. Wow. I didn't even know uh, St. Bernard's had been open. How long has St. Bernard's been a school? Uh, this is its 101st year as a school. Wow. Uh, and we just recently became an independent uh, Catholic school in 2020. So we are an old school uh, or a new school with a rich tradition, we like Excellent. to say. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Nice. So what's a uh, typical day at STB TV like? Uh, uh, typical morning. Uh, I'll pick Pat up on the way to school, and then we'll hop in and turn everything on if it, Mr. D hasn't turned it on already, and we'll start grinding out the script. Um, yeah, we rally some kids up, yeah. get everyone. Uh, we got two, two kids at sports desk, two kids who anchor, someone to do uh, the slides and um, the sound. And, uh, and that's about it. And then it's student run, so it's everyone is together there. Mr. D usually has a class, so it's, um, it's a really good environment. Nice. So my, uh, my follow-up question was going to be, what can students expect to learn there? But it sounds like you're doing everything. Yes. So script writing, uh, organizing, technical. Sound, video. Nice. Yeah. Wild. That's awesome. Yeah, we wanted to make it uh, as student run as possible. Excellent. Uh, so we do the training at the beginning of the year, and uh, I'm there to monitor and to help them in anything that they need. But uh, the goal was really to have the students take control That's of so everything. Good. And um, they've come up with a lot of great ideas for segments that we've uh, incorporated. As nice. Well. Excellent. And what sort of uh, community benefits have any of you seen as a result of this program, either in the in the school or in the larger community? Yeah, I just see like everyone seems to like know each other a lot more. I mean, we're a pretty small school, so everyone knows each other a lot already mm -hmm. through just sports, and you just get to know kids because there's so few of us. But um, you like each it's not it's not uh, just seniors or just juniors. It's everyone can can come into SCB TV. So everyone gets to know each other and blend and talking about other students like uh, Declan Fluharty had a great game the other day. Oh, I didn't know Declan. Now I do because he was just on STB TV. And nice. you just kind of get to know everyone. It's really good. Excellent. So it's like a community builder. Yeah. Yes, That's absolutely. so important. That's really cool. Uh, and what sort of challenges have you guys come across this year or in the past that really stick out? COVID or not COVID? My, my first year. Uh, the participation was not very good, mm -hmm. uh, but as we've kind of developed new segments and uh, been able to get students who bring the energy every morning, uh, everybody has seen on, t uh, on our broadcast how much fun they're having. Uh, and it's really um, drawn a big interest from students. As Pat Patrick said, uh, freshmen all the way up to seniors, everybody uh, is looking to participate. And I have a sign-in sheet. Uh, and people are signed up for multiple days in advance to try to come in and participate. So That's it's great cool. to see uh, how many students are interested in participating and want to share with the community. Nice. And how have things been going through COVID? It was well, last year. We didn't. There was a little year, bit of yeah. of a of a break period at mm -hmm. the beginning, and then we we got it going and. We, we got pretty hot and heavy. We started going, with, we got Sports Desk up and running. Sports Desk was huge. Yeah. That usually, really brought the energy. Yeah, usually we just had two anchors mm -hmm. and they'd say like the uh, weather and this day in history, a little bit about something like an early dismissal or something.
but then we got uh, a, a different camera angle and we had sports desk which is like now over to sports desk and then two kids like jump off and they're like super enthusiastic and really engaged and talk about uh, sports coming up or last night sports, Red Sox, the Bruins, everything. Everything awesome. going on that has that to do with sports. So, good. <laughs> so a lot of engagement, that's yeah. really nice. And how can uh, St. Bernard students who are not currently part of this program take advantage of it? Walk into STV TV and say that you're, you want to do it. Very, try, we try to be as close as we can. If a kid has done it two weeks in a row and and then there we, this other person did it twice, we're going to say, yeah, go, you can go to class and watch it from the classroom and then the other person can, can anchor or can do this or can do script and everyone can have a chance. Wild. So it's, I'm getting the, uh, the impression that it's not like a, um, like a set club with set members. It's like a rolling mm, yeah. basis. Yeah. 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 Very Filtering. cool. Yeah. We love to have guest anchors as well. Excellent. So teachers yeah. will come out. Everyone's, yeah, we have a teacher every once in a while. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Anderson has made a couple appearances yeah. Yeah. for very, on special occasions. That's very yeah. cool. And um, what sort of steps have uh, you collectively at STB TV been taking to make sure that this is like as inclusive as it could be? Um, just making sure that people know that we're around and that we do want members. And it doesn't matter if you have any experience or not that we're here to train them and that it is fun and it's okay to learn on the fly. It's okay to make mistakes. Um, that's why we're at school. We're here to learn and to grow as, uh, as people and as stu uh, help the students grow. So they, it's a learning process, just like being in the classroom, being in the studio is also a learning process. And uh, we want to help people uh, find their passion. And if they're interested in uh, broadcasting and production, we're here to help them. That's so good. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys being here with me today. Um, again, this is uh, Mike D. I'm sorry, one more time. Declan. Declan. All yes. right, I'll get it eventually. And Patrick <laughs> from STB TV at St. Bernard's. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Hi, I'm Audrey from the Fitchburg Cultural Council, and we're looking for new members. If you can speak and write in multiple languages, have bookkeeping skills or graphic design skills, are interested in social media or promotion, are a high school or college student, a Fitchburg business owner, artist, scientist, humanist, or just want to be involved with arts and culture here and have a say on how we spend our state allocated money, please consider joining the council. The Fitchburg Cultural Council, or FCC, also organizes Fitchburg Open Studios, creative meet and greets, networking events, and have our own show called FCC. TV, which airs Wednesday at 8 p.m. on FATV. If you are interested in volunteering to become a voting council member, come attend one of our meetings, which are always open to the public, and see what we do. We meet every third Tuesday of the month at 4.30 p.m. at the Legislative Building next to City Hall. Come to our meetings, introduce yourself, check out our City Hall webpage, and get more involved with all the amazing and cool events. All right, we're back with FCC TV. I'm Casey Taylor, your host. And now I have with me Jeremy Roche and Matthew Sinclair from the Fitchburg High School Broadcasting Program. How are you guys doing today? Super great. Very Thanks well. For us. Thank you for Excellent. having us. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. So jumping right in, what can you tell me about, sorry, very excited. What can you tell me about the uh, Fitchburg High School Broadcasting Program Group? <laughs> <laughs> You said uh, you had a different name for it. What is it? Media, media, media Studio, uh, Fitchburg High School Media Studio. Fitchburg High School Media Studio. Yeah. Excellent. All right. What's the history behind this? So I'll jump in there. And I mean, we're super excited to have a great teacher, Matt Sinclair, join at Fitchburg High School. Really the end of last year, but this is his first year, you know, working in the classroom. Congrats. So 
The studio is an amazing space, not, not unlike FATV, really. We have a tremendous um, area in our building. And right now, we're really just working on, on growing the program and having students. We've had some stops and starts there. But right now, we're building up the program for any student who's interested in learning about broadcasting, learning about the technical side, the on-air side, the script writing side, the journalism. You know, our goal is to really make it a crown jewel in the city of Fitchburg. So Matt is the man to do it and our kids. Are doing it. No pressure, no Excellent. pressure. Well, I mean, you've got a good background, so it's good. Oh man, and you said it's been running for, just is this just the first year? The studio itself has been in the building since it opened. I, I think we've had, right now it's kind of in a place where we have course titles that are, that are kind of unique mm -hmm. and we've had some folks who've helped out in the past to really get it to, now it's, it's a launching point for something that I think will continue for years to come. Excellent. And what's a typical day at Fitchburg High School broadcast studio like? Ooh, I'll field Media that Center. one. Uh, typical get day. So um, in the early days, we were um, uh, kind of getting to know each other, getting to know everyone's interests um, as far as the type of content we want to make because it's, it's a collaborative effort. Um, and then we got into um, what is broadcasting. We watched a lot of news. We talked about composition, um, kind of like what we're doing right now. Um, now we're getting to the point where we're actually we're filming things now. Um, which is pretty great. We have a couple projects we're working on. One of them is a secret, but um, yeah, it won't be a secret for very long. All right. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, well, now I'm intrigued. I know. <laughs> Maybe you're the mystery. And what can students expect to learn, like really get out of it life lesson wise? Yeah, so um, our students are great and um, we really like running the program like a real um, tech vocational program as much as we can and so I, I try and teach my students the same things I would have learned um, here um, at Fitchburg State. Um, yeah, anything from uh, types of cameras, camera work, camera movement, um, tripods, setups, cabling, rigging, audio, uh, you name it, pretty much everything we're doing right now. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And what sort of community benefits have you guys seen for either the school itself or the community as a whole, you know, like the greater Fitchburg community? Sure, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in on that. I think the best, one of the greatest parts that we have with our program is, is the collaboration with FATV. You know, and we're, we're looking to expand our collaboration with Fitchburg State as well. But our space is really modern and unique for a high school. And so ultimately what we want for our kids, you know, they're the community in our school. It's their education, not mine. Yes. You know, so, so we want them to experience this kind of like amazing opportunity to learn all the technical side, the different parts that come along with being on air writing, so that hopefully it can turn into something if they really want, you know, a job immediately after high school, a college program pathway, you know, something that makes sense and is relevant, and, and really that's what we expect for our kids in the program. Excellent. And what sort of challenges have you come across uh, both this year during COVID and just in the past couple of years, and how have you been approaching them? Um, couple, uh, can I field that one? Yeah, yeah a um, couple different challenges. So um, many of our students are just coming back from quarantine for the first time. So of um, like I said, we spend a little bit of time getting to know each other, but also kind of getting them back into a, a school mode. Um, as far as challenges within the program, um, we love challenges. We use them as creative opportunity. We've not had uh, really any technical setbacks because our good friends at FATV have taken such good care of us and, and you the cultural council as well we're grateful for you. <laughs> um, we do what we can. But yeah challenges so our students are very advanced in their use of um, social media, um, new apps, new ways of editing, new, new ways of making and branding content um, be it for Instagram or TikTok or you know wherever they're um, so we're finding ourselves meeting them on their level to nice. some extent when it comes to storytelling we want to stay relevant to them. So that's been, um, like I said, it's, I almost don't want to use the word challenge, but it, it's a good challenge. No, I, I think that is, uh, not that there is a right answer or a perfect answer, mm -hmm. but each challenge is a challenge, you know, challenge accepted. We use it as opportunity, absolutely. Yes. Awesome, awesome. And how can Fitchburg High School students take advantage of this uh, media center studio? It's an open, it's an open access uh, program in our school, so students can register for the courses. Okay. We're having the club starting this year as well, so there'll be opportunities, any student can participate in that. And really it's, it's you know, there's several different 
you know, one and two courses, so broadcasting one and two, journalism one and two. So, so those, those are all open to any student that wants to participate. Excellent. Excellent. Can you just walk into the uh, media studio? Uh, for the most part, we do yeah. keep kind of an open door policy. It's a little bit like a saloon, like a really nice, expensive <laughs> saloon. With no alcohol, <laughs> yes, for high no schoolers. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Saloon might not have been the best metaphor for that. But no, we keep an open door policy. I have um, quite a few students who come after school. Um, we have a video club we're working on right now. Um, nice. I have students who uh, want to be trained as professional interns. They want to go on to Fitchburg State and go into media studies. Not not every one of my students is going to want to do this as a career, and I, I, oh, accept, yeah. I accept that. But um, we try and teach them things that are useful, and um, they really have a lot of fun doing it, which is what matters. And so, yeah, we have, we have uh, some really special students right now. Excellent. And what is uh, Fitchburg High School, but both of you also, what are you guys doing to make sure this program is inclusive to all of the students at Fitchburg High? Um, whether that be crossing language barriers or uh, physical barriers or learning barriers? Yeah, I mean, you know, like Matt said, it's an open door policy, but it's an open access policy. All of our classes really at Fitchburg High School you know, are geared towards the full spectrum of the 1,300 students that we have. So we, we encourage and promote the excitement and the diversity and the enthusiasm of our kids. So you, you, you'll see videos that are in Spanish. You might see students who have, you know, um, different devices or something that they need maybe for, for a physical uh, disability of some sort. All are welcome. You know, come. You make it better by your by your participation, by your energy, by your perspective. So that's really kind of how I think we approach everything. But certainly, Matt's been, you know, amazing and just an open and inclusive kind of attitude too. That's too bad that you need Thank that. You. I think Thank you. And, and students feel welcomed and and really the 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 students who are part of it already are very welcoming as well. So, yeah, we want it to be a place for all. Yeah. Excellent. That sounds great. I'm very excited about this program. So thank you for being here with us today, thank Jeremy. Thank you Matt. for having us. It was wonderful to see you both. Appreciate and it. And I just thank you. Just thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks thank so you. Much. We're glad to be here. <laughs> Excellent. And thank you again to our uh, interviewees from STB TV and the Robots Robotics team from St. Bernard's. That was an awesome interview. Thanks, guys.